The OpenAI API was just released and it's pretty epic. So I'm gonna give my opinion as well as a little demo just to show off the things that you can do with it. OpenAI is the first to market with a real-time API where you can interact with a large language model with your voice basically in real time. This is used in their advanced voice mode, which they finally released on iOS and Android. But think of it like using an AI like ChatGPT, Claude, whatever, but you talk to it with your voice and it responds to you really, really fast, almost like you're actually having a conversation with it and not just giving a command to a very, very stupid robot. So if you've ever worked with large language models within uh, an existing code base, then you know that the open AI standard is the way to do things in your large language model application. It always looks something like this, where you have the messages as a body and it's always like a role with the user or the AI, as well as the content within them. It's always an HTTP request. And it's always like an object with, you know, the, the type of person, you know, user or AI. AI as well as the message. It's pretty straightforward and it's everywhere. But now though, it's a lot different. Uh, the real-time API uses the WebSocket protocol to interact basically at the speed of light, it seems. And it's actually funny because doing this, you actually get a little bit of insight of how they engineered this to be as fast as it is. They released their own demo application that you could just, you know, NPM install and try, but I actually made my own application that hopefully replaces the need for a daily standup. <laughs> so let's give it a try. So I just built this application quickly using Next.js. I'll open up the network request here so you can see exactly what's being done. But basically, you just have your to do. You just manage a list of tasks. It's like what every dev influencer uh, does at first. Hi there. How are you today? Hi. I'm doing, I'm doing great. great. Thank, Thank you, you for, for asking. asking. How, how about, about you? you? Good. Can you create a task to walk the dog for tomorrow? Added, added walk, walk the, dog the dog to your to task, task list for tomorrow. For tomorrow. Anything, Anything else, else I can, I can help, help you with? Actually, I just remembered I did that. Can you mark that as complete? All set. All set. I've marked, marked walk, walk the, dog the dog as completed, completed. for you. Is there, Is there anything, anything else you... Do you mind just creating a bunch of tasks related to learning Python variables? I need to know how to, to do variables. I don't know. Just make the tasks. I've created, I've created a, task a task for you to, you to learn, learn about, about Python, Python variables, variables today. today. Feel free, Feel free to, to ask, ask if you'd like, like to add more tasks. Can you expand on it a little bit and and just break them down into smaller tasks so I can get this done a lot easier. I've added, I've added several, several tasks, tasks to help you learn about, about Python, Python variables. variables. You'll, be You'll be understanding, understanding types, types declaring, declaring variables. variables. So you get the gist of it. It works pretty well. And like if you are doing this in a way where you want to interact with the API like in real time, it works really well. But let's kind of go do a little bit of digging. If you just go in your Chrome DevTools, you can actually see the network requests that go in and out. Like there's a ton that goes by just constantly. And the way you do this is you have to listen to a bunch of events that get sent to you. And depending on the one that is what you want to deal with, you do something accordingly. So when you receive a WebSocket event, it would look something like session updated. It's very similar to HTTP, but you're just listening for an event rather than doing a, you know, dot then or something. So the real time API is pretty cool. I just use the voice activation detection, which on the server, it detects when I'm stopped talking in order for it to work like that. I'm not really good at live speaking, so it was a little bit awkward at times but I feel like it does get my voice pretty well. A lot of functionality isn't really added with the real-time API, but just that such low latency really changes how you use the application completely. It makes you rely more on AI, which is pretty cool depending on what your use case is. So if you know me or my other channel, then you know that I love the idea of AI doing tool calls, which is extremely fast and functional here. You can really just kind of envision your voice doing a bunch of commands in an external API with like, you know, your external external to-do list or calendar, whatever it might be. But let's talk about developing though. Here are my pros and cons, starting with cons. So number one is adding in the real-time functionality is great, but the amount of work that you have to do in order to get it to work, it really, really needs to make sense for your application to do it. So in just one file alone, there's so much things that need to be done just to kind of get the basics done, which is why I just wish there was a little bit of a higher level API, which we'll get to in a moment. But you can see here that it's a little bit hard, which brings me to number two, which is is the documentation is still a little bit lackluster. But to be fair, this is in beta and um, it's very early access. And what they do have is, isn't is that bad, to be honest. So for my project, I had to rely heavily on the reference client, which is the real-time API beta for JavaScript, as well as their open AI real-time console demo, which I took so much from here, you'll see in a moment. Now, at first, I really wasn't a big fan of how open AI did their real-time API package for JavaScript, just because you would have things that look like this. 
They wanted to create a high level abstraction for sending and listening for WebSocket events. But as you can see here, there wasn't really much of a difference being added on situations like this. But the more I got involved in this project I was working on, the more I kind of appreciated their implementation because they have here just three different types of ways you can implement this within your app. So one would be similar to the OpenAI standard like this, where it doesn't give you a lot of control over what you can do, but it makes it really easy for most use cases. But then they kind of had like a throw all one right here, where it's like the real time event. And then this is where you kind of do your own custom logic that maybe might be outside the scope of this. But since the entire AI ecosystem basically relies on open AI's standard of interacting with large language models, it would be pretty interesting to see a high level abstraction on top of the existing framework to interact with this, even if it's just a couple of little changes, it'd be really helpful. And number three is that this is such an expensive API, like you will go bankrupt probably. So just as a reference here, <laughs> it's actually funny because when I wrote the script, like literally 15 minutes before I started recording, I spent about $6.48 during the development of that app I just built. But <laughs> just after running it right now, after this video, I'm at $7.63, which makes sense because of all the technology that's being using. Obviously the WebSocket connection is new and probably super expensive, but then you have the GPT-4, then the Whisper, then the text to voice. And obviously OpenAI finds constant ways to bring these prices down, but you just really got to make sure that your application makes sense financially to implement this in because yeah, you are going bankrupt in minutes. But my pros is the customization as I just showed you. It's just purely a WebSocket connection. So it doesn't matter where you are listening, you can do something with the events that are being sent. And two is the examples are pretty good for how early this is in access. You know, there's some hidden gems within the console project. And because I'm a bit of a stupid programmer, I really had issues with the real time audio recording, but in the console project, which is the demo application, not the real implementation uh, package, they have something called wave tools and it just makes it easy for you to use your microphone real time with the API. And as you can see right here, it'll just automatically record your audio and send as little packets through the WebSocket request. And even in this little demo right here, I just copied so much of it from this Next.js application, specifically from here, just to kind of power mine. And it was just funny because I just wish they implemented this maybe as a easy way to implement in their actual package. Overall, the capabilities that are possible with this type of API is really incredible. But just do take in mind that this is not something that you can just plug into your existing implementation of OpenAI's tools or really any AI tools for that matter, as well as you're going to be spending a lot of money for it. So if this is something that you can afford or something that your tools or your project <laughs> financially is able to pay for itself, then you should absolutely use this because this is cutting edge technology. The only issue obviously is just, it's not easy to implement and it's expensive. If you want me to continue building a project like this and then maybe make another video about it, let me know. This channel's new and I just really enjoy making things that you can watch a little bit more uncut. All right, peace out.